When objects are rubbed together, heat is produced. This should tell you that heat is energy because it can be produced by the mechanical energy of rubbing. Furthermore, you probably know that a boiling pot of water can produce enough steam to blow the lid off the pot. In this case, heat from the steam is converted to mechanical energy of the lid flying upward. Heat is the form of energy most often confused for a thing or substance because it seems to flow through matter. As it turns out, heat isn't a thing at all. It doesn't weigh anything, and it doesn't exist apart from the matter that it flows through. Heat is simply motion at the submicroscopic scale. When something is hot, its molecules and atoms are jiggling around randomly. That's it. You can't see this motion because unlike recognizable motion, where a large object moves with some observable velocity, heat is spread out over an enormous number of atoms and molecules which only move over very tiny distances. The fact that heat is just motion was a very important discovery in the history of science because it was crucial to establishing the conservation of energy, and it demystifies many observable phenomena quite simply. To get some intuition for what this means, consider the well-known fact that heat always flows from hot to cold. Try to visualize a gym full of two crowds of people, one running around very quickly and randomly, that's the hot, and the other moving around much slower, that's the cold. If these crowds encounter each other, the result will be that the fast-moving people collide with the slower and push them around. Or you can imagine a pool table with one set of balls on one side moving very fast and another set on the other side moving very slow. Near the center, fast-moving balls will collide with the slow-moving balls, making the fast ones slow down and the slow ones speed up. The remaining fast balls towards one side will now collide with the slower balls towards the center. Eventually, the velocities of the balls will tend to equalize at some intermediate velocity. It will appear as if the energy of the fast moving balls has spread from one side of the table to the other, just as heat spreads out from hot to cold. This seemingly crude analogy is actually better than you might expect. For gases under certain conditions, the flow of heat can be modeled exactly by assuming that gas molecules are solid objects randomly colliding with each other. This explains how heat always knows how to flow from hot to cold. Slow moving billiard balls could slow down even more and cause the fast ones to move even faster, but after many random collisions this is highly unlikely. Similarly, conservation of energy itself does not prevent a cold object from getting even colder while heating up a hot object. But likewise, after an enormous number of molecules colliding randomly, the only thing we ever observe is heat flowing from hot to cold. Heat is blind. There's nothing directing the process of heat flow from the top down, yet it always knows what to do. An even simpler process to visualize with the pool table analogy is the way a hot gas can expand and push on the walls of its container, like steam in a boiling pot of water. As the billiard balls move around, they collide with the edge of the table. If they are moving faster, they collide with more force. The reason heat makes solids melt and liquids boil is because once molecules are shaking around fast enough, they break free of the forces that bind together liquids or solids. But heat transfer by direct contact, known as heat conduction, is not the only way to transfer heat. Hot objects can also cool by emitting electromagnetic waves, that is, light. I gave a little bit of an analogy of how this works in another talk. I said when an object emits a photon, there's a kickback that causes it to slow down, analogous to the kickback from a gun or a projectile. But here, our strictly mechanical picture breaks down. And this isn't exclusive to the study of heat, light being massless and seemingly ethereal, but capable of carrying energy and exerting forces on matter, prevents physics and nature as a whole from being understood on the basis of mechanical analogies.